Hi, I'm Kara and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Some people eat fast food every once in a while, some not at all, and others like myself eat fast food quite often. I'm the type of person that when I go out to do errands or anything, I go and get a caffeinated beverage from Tim Hortons or Starbucks, a place like that. And I'm also the type of person that when I see a new item from a fast food place, I wanna try the item. I don't know why. Most of the times, I don't like it. Recently, I found Sierra Ann's channel through shorts of her not eating fast food for 30 days. And I thought that was a good challenge. And in filming it, it would help me keep accountable and not cheat or fail. I basically followed what she did in terms of what was considered fast food and the definition that I typed into Google with, which most people can agree with, that places like McDonald's, Burger King, Taco Bell, etc. is considered fast food. I think we can all agree on that, but what I learned throughout this time is a lot of people have very different definitions of what fast food is. For example, a lot of people don't consider Pita Pit fast food or burritos from a burrito place fast food. A lot of people don't consider going to Tim Hortons and getting a coffee or going to Starbucks and getting a coffee as fast food. I took the cue of that being fast food because Sierra mentioned that her husband wanted to go get coffee and that broke her rules. So I was just following her guidelines on that. But when you Google it, Tim Hortons is considered fast food by like the fast food chain ranking in Canada. So that's also what I went by. I learned many people had broader definitions of fast food, such as processed food and I know there's a difference between fast food and processed food and I allowed myself to eat processed food because sometimes you get busy sometimes you just want a chicken strip and you don't want to make it but a lot of people ragged on me for eating these and considered them fast food and a lot of people said just because I made it at home doesn't mean it's not fast food for instance I made an egg breakfast sandwich on an English muffin. So just because McDonald's popularized it, that no longer counts as not fast food if we make it at home. But what I considered is, I know it's going into the food for the most part, and I can control it, such as the amount of oils used to cook, etc. One person thought I used frozen broccoli, which I didn't, I cut it, I just didn't show the footage, some person said that that was fast food because they thought I got it from frozen vegetables, which a lot of people don't consider fast food, but others stemming from everyone's definitions. I learned that regardless of what you're gonna eat, everyone's gonna have an opinion. And I need to get better at not taking those opinions personally and trying to please everyone and do what's best for me. In the 30 days that I didn't eat fast food, I was I had a lot of cravings. I wanted Taco Bell, I wanted burritos, I wanted Indian food, which you could get at an Indian restaurant, but I wanted to stay away from all restaurants, even though technically it doesn't fit the definition of fast food. Mass and quickly produced to get out high grease content, etc. In order to satisfy those cravings, I cooked things I normally wouldn't and have never cooked before, which showed me that it wasn't as difficult to make those foods. It was a little more time consuming, but overall it wasn't an all day thing. It was inconvenient in terms of that I couldn't continue working while my food was on the way or et cetera, but it wasn't unmanageable that I could do it again. And I learned other things that have, that other foods that have a similar profile curb your cravings. Like I wanted Taco Bell, but instead I made a taco salad with some tortilla chips. It had the crunch of a hard taco, it had the cheesiness, it had low fat sour cream, and it had the spices and it, it was more filling. It kept me full longer. I was satisfied with it. Another thing that I found with the cravings, as the month went on, I noticed that I didn't need the, and you didn't need to go and get the new featured item or the specialty limited time item, which was reassuring. And I noticed that I had been, I started to crave less processed things, if that makes sense. So, so towards the end, instead of craving Taco Bell, I would want a taco salad. Did I lose any weight? I don't know. I don't know. Because 
I didn't do this for weight loss purposes, although with my overall goal being building healthier habits and a lifestyle, mental health, physical health, emotional health, etc., I do want to lose a significant amount of weight, um, but that wasn't my focus. I just wanted to break the habit of going and going and getting fast food, eating out, craving it, and stuff like that. So I really didn't weigh myself before or after. I did, what I did notice though, my appetite lowered naturally. I wasn't constantly hungry. I felt better. I wasn't lethargic all the time. I wasn't lethargic after eating. I had less, I had less stomach issues than I normally, that I've been having. One thing I almost assumed would happen would that I would be saving money because takeout and fast food adds up really quickly even getting a, an ice cap or an iced or a frappuccino or something like that every time I go out it adds up and I did save quite a bit of money I didn't track exactly how much I saved but it was it was substantial I did splurge a little on things to make the items like for instance the sushi I did spend eight dollars on imitation crab meat but I also had a lot left over that I put in the freezer that I could make again. An unexpected thing that I never even thought about before that I noticed dramatically decreased was the amount of garbage. I, you, you know that you have a lot of packaging and stuff with the takeout drinks and the wrapping for all the paper, for the, all the product, for all the food items and the bag they put it in and stuff. But you don't really realize how much it, how much garbage you produce until you don't have it in the aftermath. Will I go back to eating fast food almost daily? It's been about a week since the 30 day challenge um, ended. And if you guys saw my last short, you'll know that I had a nice cap, which the caffeine of it didn't affect me because as you all have seen, I have a pretty substantial monster addiction, which I'm gonna work on, I promise. But the sugar from it, it affected me in terms of hyperness and the sugar crash. Did I run out and go have Taco Bell or McDonald's? No. I've had pizza once from my favorite pizza place and I can I can taste the difference. It it was very I it was very eye-opening. My mouth was burning from the salt. The amount of grease killed me. I couldn't eat the same quantity that I could. I felt very full afterwards and uncomfortable. Um I also had I also had digestive issues from it and I didn't sleep well the night following. I will greatly diminish the amount of takeout that I do have in terms of fast food. Will I still eat processed food? Yes, because I like chicken, I like the chicken strips that I buy. Do I like craft dinner? Yes. And some of you might still think it's fast food. It's a faster version of craft dinner, but it I don't get it from a drive-thru. So I think that's a step up. And I do put things in it to up the protein and the vegetable content of it. So I think if I start eliminating processed food, that's my next, that's one of my next goals is to cut down on the processed food. And this experience helped me eat more vegetables, explore cooking, and it was overall good. Thanks for watching.